you are a theoretical physicist uh, with a specialization in early universe cosmology, and you and I both uh, studied together on the different poles of experiment and theory way back, beginning in 1993 at Brown University. And uh, oh. yeah, and I want to take us back to those uh, to those heady days in the early part of the or the late part of the previous millennium. I, it mm -hmm. makes us sound really old when we talk like that. Uh, but I want to talk about um, how our careers have kind of been mirror images of one another. You pursuing uh, uh, theoretical pursuits in cosmology and mine and experimental, but kind of loosely coupled like Cooper pairs uh, across the uh, the Brillouin sphere or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. None other than Leon Cooper, your colleague, our former professor at uh, at Brown University. We were taken as advanced quantum me uh, mechanics. I don't know if you remember this, but I was in that class, of course. Yeah, you were with me. Yeah, we were in that class. I barely could handle regular quantum mechanics. And here he was. And um, I remember him saying, so I asked a question and he's like, well, you obviously didn't pay attention in your undergraduate quantum mechanics class. And I was half tempted to say, well, I learned undergraduate quantum mechanics from your book, but I didn't say it. I didn't have the, um, oh, oh, the can you imagine that? I don't even think <laughs> Leon would, he would have smacked me upside the head. He knows who Leon Cooper is, right? I mean, yeah, tell us about him. Tell us about him. What does he mean? What does he mean to physics? There's a, you know, almost 50 year old problem called superconductivity that was actually, right, experimental. It's in 1911. Cameron Lynn Onis, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah discovered experimentally that metals, you know, um, will, you know, conduct with zero resistance. And there was no explanation for it theoretically. And everybody worked on it, including Einstein, Feynman, Landau, you name it, Schrodinger, Heisenberg, um, and a very young guy named Leon Cooper. And the important thing about Leon was he was an outsider. So he was trained as a particle physicist, you know, uh, you know a New Yorker like us. Yeah. And um, Bardeen took him out to, to Illinois. And Bardeen actually literally wanted, um, you know, somebody that was not a condensed matter person to work on the problem because he felt that they would have fresh eyes and an outsider's perspective. And it proved to be correct. Um, and, you know, I, um, the important thing about Leon is he is, um, I mean, the, the, you know, he basically took that, what, 17-hour train ride from Illinois back to New York and decided to just, he tried all these calculations and say, you know what, I'm just going to, like, see the problem as a physics problem and just, like, throw away the math and just, like, you know, just do some dirty physics, use my intuition. And he cracked the code. He solved supercon. you know, he came up with a key idea, which is that fermions can pair up to, to act as a quasi, kind of, you know, basically effectively act as a spin zero particle. Um, that enabled this collective effect such that it, that collective effect of the spin zero particle could conduct um, without any um, resistance. And it led to some predictions and uh, it earned him a Nobel Prize. And one of the things Leon always used to tell me whenever I, I, he would make me feel stupid, he said, um, you know, Einstein once told me, I was like, okay, he goes, <laughs> that... Um, if, if we knew what we were talking about, we wouldn't call it research. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Yeah, uh, that was one of his chestnuts. Yeah, and like one, one, one other interesting, I think very powerful Leon Cooper story, I think that really kind of, um, in, kind of is, is my lantern, all right, for how I do things and how I do everything in my, in my work, um, including my mentoring of students. One time after 15 years, I, I figured that, you know, that I was going to come back and like impress him, you know, like I'd already been a, a young professor. I would just gotten tenure. I got this fancy, you know, APS award and all this, whatever. Right. Um, and I drive back and Leon is there. He's just about to retire. I go in his office and I start getting a blackboard. And I, <laughs> at this point, I figured that I knew all this, like all this math and all this stuff so I'm sitting there. And by the time I'd, I'd written this paper with, with, with Michael Peskin, that was like a PRL and it was like a big thing for us. And I write the thing and he goes, you know, Stefan, you just slow down. I mean, you know, I think I'm a pretty smart guy, but you just got to slow down. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, wow. You know, it's like he set me up for the sucker punch. I'm like, oh, wow. Like Leon is like, you know, I'm, I'm going too fast to the master. So then he goes, and you know, why don't you find a real problem and like work on it? Find, find yourself a real problem, like a hard problem, like a real physics problem, and like dedicate yourself and work on it. Mm. And I was like, you know, I've, I, you know, 
it was like the death blow of those kung fu movies. Like only three days later, you start like you know having internal bleeding and like. I was just like Whoa. Yeah, like I've been wasting 15 years of my time, like you know, chasing whatever, yeah, you know, ch- uh, chasing, you know, chasing the, the company basically, mm-hmm. right? Like I, yeah. I, I want to identify my problem, like you know, and actually I thought about you because you had been to you as an experimentalist. I call you, a th- uh, you know, a theoretical experimentalist. <laughs> um, had been had been chasing that, right? You had been mm-hmm. doing that for decades. Yeah, I think. I was talking about this with Jan Eleven, who you connected me with uh, on the podcast recently. And I said, you know, physicists uh, sort of have to cultivate a brand, like what their tastes are. And I think you exemplify that um, as well as, and I hope we can get into this as well, um, not just within the research domain where you're, you know, eminently you know, successful in your research program of coming up with a brand, the Alexander brand, which has a characteristic style, which is different, you know, than someone like Jana who will write, you know, very- on Fordham Road, Alexander's. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but, but on the same token, having, you know, having a very disciplined approach to, to research, but also being able to communicate ideas to a lay audience. And, uh, and I think exemplified in, in this book, how you really have an ability, which, which I, you know, as I discussed with her, there aren't so many people like her, like you, who can both communicate to to the layperson, but also can uh, can do cutting edge research.